Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we love you. calls us to reflect upon marriage. In our life as Christians, we have different vocations, but the marriage vocation is the foundation of the family, is the foundation of the church. Where we have a happy family, we have a happy marriage, we have a happy church. But the readings today call upon us to reflect upon the essential properties of marriage. One, indissolubility of marriage. What God has put together, no man should separate. Many times people come into marriage. Some come with different intentions. Others come wholeheartedly to be tied, to tie a knock with this pattern of theirs. But some people are not faithful. They come into marriage thinking it is going to be dissolved. Thinking it is for a time if it is for a given time. Other people enter into a marriage like a temporary contract, yet marriage. Today, the first reading and the gospel remind us it is a permanent contract. We cannot dissolve marriage once it is validly celebrated. And therefore, we pray on this Sunday that the youth and everyone who is aiming to enter into marriage may enter marriage knowing that it is a life contract. And knowing when God puts together, no man will put apart. And secondly, we talk of the oneness of marriage. When man and woman come together, they are blessed by God. They become one. You find a husband and a wife. They are one person. In the name, we normally refer to the family of so and so. The family of so. This means the two are now bonded. Forever and ever. This oneness should call upon every married couple. Always and everywhere to recall. Whatever you own, whatever you possess belongs to the other. Sometimes I find some people arguing. You find a couple because of money. I need my money back. A husband provided money to, to help in the house. But he's demanding for the 1,000 to the extent of saying, you have to give me my 1,000. It's like, you mean when it comes to money, you are now different? But when it comes to other things, you are one? This is a Sunday where we have to recall those of you who are married, you are one. May this oneness not be limited in any way to material things. May it not be limited only and only to putting up together in the same roof, but in whatever you do, in whatever you plan, in whatever you aspire for, you are two people in one. Two bodies, one person. Thirdly, marriage is between a husband and a wife, a man and a woman. We pray. There are so many relationships today. So many relationships. They are not, it's not marriage. God reminds us a relationship that should be called marriage is between a man and a a woman. We pray for all people who are in other relationships that we cannot call marriage. May God send them his grace. May God accompany them such that they come to the true and full meaning of what God has intended in marriage. Today's Sunday, as we reflect upon 
these properties of marriage. The readings also remind us that marriage, the purpose of marriage, for the two people to be one, it is for the happiness of both of them, to promote human dignity. Some people think when you enter marriage, you become submissive, you lose your rights, you lose your goals. God has created man and woman. They leave their parents' house, their parents' home. They be one, they be happy. And they, they are not together such that one is making use of the other. But a helper, each one is a helper to the other. We are aspiring, both of us, to reach perfection, to reach God, not to use one another for different ends. All other relationships that are not marriage in the true sense are just for the worldly desires. They are just for making use of a human being. But the true dignity of a human person in a relationship and in accordance to marriage should and is between a man and a woman. The second reading today calls us to think of the difficulties we have in marriage, the difficulties we have in Christ, the difficulties we have in marriage, the difficulties we have in our families. The second reading is consoling us that indeed we have a Lord who is human. He emptied himself and took the loneliness. He came below even the angels to become like us. And therefore, when we have difficulties, when we have challenges, we can go to him. He knows our human nature. Many families, many marriages are going through challenges. We Christians tend to judge the marriages that have failed and the Christians in them as failures. If Jesus Christ our Lord was a human and he understands us, he is also calling upon us to understand one another. May we not judge the people whose marriages have failed. May we not judge the people who have been bold enough to come out and seek for help. There are so many people, when they find challenges, they are able to kneel down and say, God, help me, my marriage is falling apart. They turn to priest, Father, what should I do? Some couples, when a woman or a man comes to seek for help, the other partner is like, why have you betrayed me? Why do you expose me like that? That firmness, that courage to stand out and say, I need help. To stand out and say, it is not working out, what should I do? We pray that when difficulties come in marriage, we have the guts, we have the courage to stand out first and foremost to Jesus Christ. Say, God, we need your help. But above all, to stand out and say, I need to solve this problem in marriage. Marriage is not a prison. Marriage is not a cell. But marriage is a blessing that God has given humanity to enjoy one another and above all, to help one another reach eternal happiness. Today is such a great day that every Catholic, every married couple, as we are going to church, sit together, sit with your partner. The two became one as you turn on your right, as you turn on your left. You are seated with your husband. You are seated with your wife. The exchange of peace how much peace are you going to give to a wife of another man than to your wife? May we offer each other the sign of peace. When you turn this side and he is your husband, she is your wife, peace be with you. Indeed, both of you are one. Peace be to you, peace be to you, and with your spirit. Some couples, when we enter church, a husband sits at the front pew, the wife sits at the back pew. Let us offer each other. So you see somebody peeping around. Where is my wife? She's there giving peace to somebody who does not belong to him, to her, all to her. This is a Sunday where we couples should dress as married couples. This is a Sunday on which we have to show our children. 
Even when we have challenges in the families, marriage remains such a holy and sanctified sacrament where two beings, man and wife, come together and live as one person. The Lord be with you.